Okay, six o'clock, time to get started. Uh, Y'all please join me. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, clerk, please call the roll. All right, Trustee Norelka. Trustee Jones? Here. Trustee Sleuth? Here. Trustee Bowden? Here. Trustee Sturba? Here. And Trustee Hudson? Here. All right, public comments. Can I pull this down? Sure. Nancy Cross, care about Christmas in the village. I've sent Peter texts and emails and have got a response back. Does anybody in this room know the difference between a commission and a committee? You should. You know? should I don't know the exact definition. The commission was formed, one trustee and the rest were citizens from the community that wanted to see the businesses thrive that day. And it's under the village so that we could collect private money from businesses and community members and be covered that day for the insurance. Under the mayor, he has now appointed people that, Julie, do you want to be on it? Nick, did you ask? He forced to be on it. His own employee doesn't want to be on it. And we're continuing. I Did said, I ever say I didn't want to be on it? You didn't answer me. You just stared at me. Well, it's not I that said, I Julie, didn't want, want to be on it, but there's a past that I wasn't sure if it was going to work out. So it had nothing to do with if I wanted to be on it or if I didn't want to be on it. Okay. Moving on. So this year started. He sent a text, which I was kind of thrown back because the mayor is usually not involved in Christmas in the Village. And the reason right now I'm standing here is because the businesses need this. And it doesn't seem like somebody wants it to happen. Sent a message to me, is the meeting going to take place? Never has the mayor gotten involved. It's usually Mike communicates with the, are we having the meeting, what are we doing? Never since April did he answer me back on what I sent him waited for the election, I was removed. I don't care, but I do care that this is going to go down the drains. I know his first move for that two months was to go to the chamber to see if they wanted it, didn't want it, was told that he wanted to cancel it. Mike asked me, he didn't even ask Mike if he should, who he should put on or remove. Got a message from Mike, hey, can you come bring me up to speed? I don't know what's going on. Spent two and a half hours with you. <laughs> Thought it was under control. Tammy's here. She doesn't feel she has the right to speak because she's not a citizen in the village, but she has every right to be up here too speaking. Um, it's not going well. So I reached out to the mayor. He responded back to that email. Had a meeting with him for 45 minutes. Thought we had gotten it covered. Came to Christmas in the village meeting. Thought we had it covered. Wake up Friday morning, Jamie's doing her own thing. Own thing. Um, the information's wrong. The village is not hosting the, it's here, but it's a sponsorship just like every other business. But somehow the logo is ending up in everything. Like this is the village. It's to promote the businesses. I don't know if you guys know this is going on. I'm not the only business. We own two businesses, whether you guys like it or not. The Cross is own two businesses in this town. And I believe if you look, we own the oldest business in this town. The second oldest business is not happy with the way it's going. You walked in there, Peter, on Friday. Did you compliment them at all when you were in there or acknowledge the business? Gonna answer? No, keep going. It's public comment. Your, okay. It's your the floor. answer is no. The answer is no. 
I want to know where this is going. I'm trying to help Tammy get the train back on the track, and every time we turn around, pretty sure the strings are being pulled by him with Jamie. Asked him in a text to just stay out of the way, and haven't heard back. Are we going to destroy this event, or is it going to stay in, on the track? Crickets. Gary, you know how good it, the event is for your business and your daughter's business. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'm just shocked that I'm asking for a response and we have crickets from this. It's for all the businesses, not just chamber members, all the businesses in the town. So how is this going to be handled? I thought we didn't even, ha I didn't even want to be here. But I will not let this event go under. I appreciate that the, the work that the committee has done and I think the event is going to come off very well. But why, like the text, the flyer you have up is wrong. Please take it down. The flyer is still up. Jamie shared it three times today. I don't understand. And that's why I'm standing right here. And I guess we stand here until I get an answer. Are you going to let Tammy run this event, or are you and Jamie going to keep sabotaging it? We're not sabotaging it. You were very concerned that we didn't have a flyer for the... Yeah, for the so we had open it. House, so we made one, and now you're upset about it. And I should have brought the flyer. We were upset that it was behind, but you threw a flyer together on black and white paper copy, and people are like, "It's not the businesses weren't all there. The information's wrong. The village logos on there. If you're going to put logos, you got to put every business on there." Well, I told Tammy that when she gets the the one. Send it to me and we'll put everything up for her. We'll I mean, she's going to handle that. Okay. I will hand deliver it to you. Thank you. I just want to, I mean, the, the business owners are upset. And I love the crickets from the mayor on this. What is the plan for next year? Well, we've got a wrap-up meeting in January, and we'll figure it out from there. Good. It's not dying. Uh, Steve Cross, 619 East Walnut, in your town. Uh, just a kind of follow-up on what Nancy was saying. You know, we started this event back in 2015 kind of built it from the ground up and we created a true commission at that time which was made up of one village trustee and members of the community and school and everybody else and we brought everybody together and we created this great event I mean it's grown every year um, I kind of agree that do I don't kind of agree I totally agree that the way this thing is formed now, it's not a commission. It's totally changed. It's become a more of a village board committee, and that was not the intention from the original start. And I think we've lost a little bit of focus. And, you know, it seems to me like just about everything else that goes on, it's Peter focused. I, you know, Peter, your ego has just gotten so big that I just don't understand it. And uh, everything circles back to, to you, March Dental, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just like a lot of the events here, uh, it, everything's got to kind of have your name in it. And that's not the idea. It's about all of the businesses in this community. It's about the community as a whole. That's all I'll say about that. I have a question for you, a direct question. Do you know anybody by the name of Heath Wright? Heath Wright. Heath Wright. No, do not. Matt. No. 
Something that's really bothered me about this whole downtown streetscape was the way that Upland Design was originally hired. So on the November 9th meeting, you came to the board and you said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about this downtown streetscape. I think, you know, it fits in with the TIF and the business development district. And I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Amy and I have talked to three different firms and only we've heard back from two, but we're kind of leaning toward this Upland Design. Also in that meeting, you mentioned that you had a friend that was a landscape architect. So I don't know if that friend has anything to do with Upland Design or not. But regardless, at that meeting, you know, you had said, well, this is going to be like a $1.5 to $2 million project to do this downtown streetscape. We're going to, I, you suggested, to fund this entire thing through the aqua money, through the sale of the uh, water and sewer to aqua, to use that money to fund this project and to pay it back <coughs> through the business development fund and the TIP. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. At that meeting, you stated that you know we generate somewhere between seventeen and nineteen thousand dollars a month in this business development fund right now. I don't want to spend the whole thing. Let's look at having maybe ten thousand dollars a month toward this payback, correct? Correct. You said that, you know, at $1.52 million, at $10,000 a month, we're looking at 17 years to pay it back. Correct? Okay. So now we move forward. Next meeting, November 23rd, there's a village board meeting, and lo and behold, we hire Upland Design. I don't understand how a 1.5, at that time, $1.5, $2 million contract can be awarded without any request for proposals, without any input from the village board. It's Peter and Amy saying, hey, we had two, I like this one, let's give them the contract for 38000 and change, I believe it was. But not only that $38,000 and change, but this company, on the bidding process and everything else, they're going to be making a considerable money on the back end if it goes through, correct? If we choose to if use we, them as a... Well, you've, used, you've already chosen to use them. Don't, yeah, you've already chosen to use them. You've already spent $38,000 of village money. Correct. Okay. That was for so the you, proposal. For proposals. <laughs> All right. But... Every indication has been made that if this moves forward, they're going to be the people. Is that not correct? Upland Design is a landscape architect. They're not a, they don't build But in, if you look back at the November 9th meeting, the comments made by Peter was that they would also handle the bidding and, I can get the exact words if I look at my phone, but the bidding and the uh, construction process of that bid. If we chose them to. Yeah. Okay. We're going to use right. process. So, okay. So let me let me continue. Okay. But I still don't understand how this firm was hired without any input from the board and any widespread request for proposals. I mean this isn't a small project and it's turned into a six point five million dollar project, not just a one point five to two million dollar project. So now to pay it back at $10,000 $10, a month, we're looking at 54 years, not 17 years. That money from the sale of the Ak to Aqua, of the water and sewer, when that was sold, it was agreed by the board that was not written in stone, I understand that, but that money was to be used to be invested. The interest from that investment was to be used to help the general fund and also be used to promote any economic development possibility. I don't see how a $6.5 million streetscape can be considered an economic development possibility. There's no way that that is going to generate enough income to even come close to paying back that debt. 
period. There's no way. I own a business. I own a building. I own two businesses in a building downtown. I would love to see the downtown cleaned up. We have that ten to seventeen thousand dollars a month in the business development fund. I've asked this board, what would it cost to fix the streets, fix the sidewalks, and change the street lights? Never gotten an answer to that question. Has that question ever been looked at? It has been. It and what was that number? And what was that number? We don't have it yet. It's from, <coughs> you know, we've given it to Robinson to do. They're doing the surveys of the streets. They're doing. You know, to, to get a number, we've got to they've got to do their. Well, thing. I've I've seen them out surveying. I've seen them looking at the streets. Yeah. I've seen them doing you know all that of that. Stuff doesn't take overnight. Troy, how how long will it come? Will be will tell we have that number. What are we talking about? An estimate? The number to an estimated number to fix the streets, the existing streets, repair any bad existing sidewalks, and change the street lights. Not widen the sidewalks, plant numerous trees and flowers and put up a gateway arch and columns and create this legacy that's being promoted. Well, we haven't come up with that number, but we can. Has, has the board asked you to create that number? They've asked us to look at other, you know, things with the streetscape. Okay, None. but the mayor just told me that he's asked Robinson for that number. Well, we, we're in the process of looking at the survey. See, this is this is there's there's so much smoke and mirrors that it, it just it baffles me. I want all of the residents of this village to be aware that if this board commits six point five million dollars of the aqua money, it's gone. They're not going to get it back in a short period of time because there is not a return on that investment. You look out at I-57, you look at the proposed travel center and hotel, that whole I-57 corridor, that's the place that money needs to be focused because we have a TIF there that's a very young TIF, that's a TIF that's gonna just explode that you're gonna be able to recoup any investment that you put into that back in a short period of time. This is a very old new TIF in the downtown, but it's so new with old property. The difference between TIF 1 and TIF 2 is TIF 2 has no development. So any development in that TIF is going to create a tremendous amount in that TIF fund. The TIF 1, it's going to take forever for that to grow. Yes, we did it, we started it, there's money in it, but not enough money to, to support a $6.5 million streetscape. Maybe a little bit of money to help with some facade program downtown, to help clean up some of the buildings downtown. This is where, to me, as a resident, as a business owner, as somebody that's been downtown for the last 33 years every day, that's where the focus needs to be. This grandiose plan is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And people need to open their eyes and realize that. This is, this is some, I don't know, I just, it doesn't make any sense. We're not ready for that. We're ready to clean up the downtown, we're ready to fix the streets, fix the sidewalks, change out the streetlights. That is probably going to be a very more manageable plan. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right, moving on to the consent agenda. There's just a couple items in the consent agenda. Any of the trustees want to remove either one of those items? If not, uh, let's see the uh, payroll, pay period ending 10, 30, 21, uh, 31,633. Uh, accounts payable, general fund 27,547.65. Capital improvement fund $6,412.99. Business development district $1,299. Total for all those funds, $35,259.64. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion. Second. 
Moved by Trustee Jones, seconded by Trustee Sturba. Okay. Roll call vote. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Sturba? Yes. Trustee Sluice? Yes. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Bowden? Present. All right, moving on to staff committee reports. Uh, administrator, anything? Uh, just a couple quick things. Uh, we're working on uh, updating the website, so we're looking for pictures of the community that would show kind of uh, something that would make you think of Piatone. So, or just something nice or with crowds. So if anybody's just got some pictures that they want to share, maybe that would be featured on the website, just let me know, send them to me if you're willing to have them on the website. Um, if there's any businesses in the downtown area who's interested in submitting a letter of support, we're um, going up for a grant for the downtown. And um, we've already gotten several letters of support and thanks for those. So if any other businesses would be interested in in writing a letter, just let me know. I can give you a sample. <coughs> We're um, trying to uh, set up blood drives for 2022. So working with the uh, fire department and maybe have it located there um, this year. So we'll get dates to you when they're confirmed. How was the last one? It was good. It wasn't as highly um, attended as our two previous, but um, it was good. Do you want to give an update on the second street saloon? So the <coughs> the only thing holding us up is the pole that, that is leaning in between the two buildings. And um, we've had ComEd come out finally and take a look at it. And they told us it wasn't their pole. <laughs> I'm waiting to uh, get a confirmation from them to determine then what our next step will be. If it's a privately owned pole, we'll have to figure out who owns it or um, shore it up ourselves. And then we can get started with the demo. All right. Um, any questions for the administrator? If not, uh, moving on with reports. Uh, Troy, do you have anything? No. For? Okay. Uh, my comments just want to thank everybody for enjoyable holiday, uh, Halloween weekend. Uh, thanks to Chambers Plumbing and Cornerstone Coffee for sponsoring the truck or treat. And thanks to our uh, Piatone Police for keeping everybody safe uh, during the holiday. I wanted to welcome new business, uh, Simple Expressions Boutique to downtown. Sounds like they had a successful opening weekend. And that is it. Um, no old business, new business. A motion to waive the uh, canvassers and solicitors <coughs> permit fee for selling Boy Scout spaghetti dinner tickets. So um, at uh, our last AOC meeting, they decided uh, Anybody who wanted a, a, uh, a waiver for a, a fee, any kind of nonprofit, that the board would, you know, decide that. So uh, this basically is waiving the fee for the Boy Scouts to go out and sell spaghetti dinner tickets. So I'll motion to waive the fee. Okay. Second. Moved by Trustee Bowden. Second by Trustee Sluice. Okay. Roll call vote. Trustee Bowden. Yes. Trustee Sluice. Yes. Trustee Jones. Yes. Trustee Hudson. Yes. Trustee Sturba. Yes. All right. Item B is a motion to appoint Melissa <coughs> Kulash to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, we've had an opening since uh, Trustee Hudson moved up to the board. Uh, so I asked uh, uh, Melissa to join the Planning and Zoning Commission, and she uh, uh, agreed to. So we just need a motion to approve that. Motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Jones, second by Trustee Hudson. Okay, roll we'll call vote. Trustee Jones? Yep. Trustee Hudson? Yes. Trustee Sluice? Yes. Trustee Bowden? Yes. And Trustee Marevka? I mean, <laughs> excuse me, Trustee Sturba? Yes. All right. Uh, next, I'm going to kind of turn it over to Troy. So, uh, Downtown Phase 1 parking plan um, is the Railroad Street um, parking. Oh, I'm sorry, did I skip something? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Item C, re review board committee assignments. So um, I switched things up a little bit uh, on the, uh, the committees. Um, so just uh, we gave you all a copy that you can see. Um, uh, Shelly got moved to the downtown committee, and uh, Gary 
that moved to um, the uh, Public Works, and uh, Nick got put on the building committee, and I think that is, yeah, we took Pat off of the uh, Public Works committee. So that is that. Um, so anyway, uh, well, moving on to item D, the downtown phase one draft parking plan. So we've had uh, Troy and Robinson Engineering uh, out and about uh, surveying the streets downtown and doing core samples. Um, and uh, I wanted them to bring this draft to the board to see uh, there was some concerns <coughs> whether everything would fit in that area. And uh, I know, Troy, you want to just kind of walk through the design a little bit? Sure. Um, and this is contingent on CN Railroad being okay with the distance that we're showing it from the tracks. This was, it was based on what the lease agreement shows and the, the dimension they showed on that and their drawing. So it's only, the fence is really only 10 feet from the track, so um, we'll have to obviously confirm that. If, if that distance has to change, the, the layout will have to change too. But this would be the best case scenario where um, Railroad Street would still be a two-way street. This is very similar to the original plan that was done in the uh, planning study. So there'd be two-way on Railroad Street, which would be reconstructed, um, the sidewalk, along railroad the, uh, the west side of Railroad Street and then a one, kind of <coughs> a, near North Street the one-way entrance to the parking area with the angle of parking so the the parking area will only be one way going south um, and then we're trying to just leave as much room as we can for the center landscape median right now it's at six feet and because of there's very little storm sewer and small storm sewers out there um, cons considering not putting curb along the landscape medium to allow water to kind of drain like a, a bioswale type area to help with drainage um, and just want to see if you know how the what the board felt about that you know, we might need wheel stops there if we don't put a curb there um, <coughs> and then you know in the landscape median area there'd be trees and um, decorative lighting the sidewalk to get across Railroad Street with the crosswalk, and we have to we're kind of gonna have to see how to deal with the comet poles that are already in the street. They're pretty much right in the where the curb line will be, so there's really nowhere for them to go. So I believe they're probably gonna end up staying there, but we'll have to talk to comet about that. So it's this is very this is just preliminary layout. We still have to figure out slopes and drainage, but this you know this is the first step. Would it be better if we just got rid of the island section altogether and just put a curb along the road like Mantino has with the one way in, one way out that you can park on an angle both ways? Because <coughs> I'm guessing like when we lease, it's going to be we lease half of this from the railroad, like that, the island. Right? Um, the lease? Yeah. Goes how, much of, how much of this do we own, I guess? Um, yeah, you probably own about half of it and lease about <coughs> half of it, yeah. from what I remember. Like, not saying, like, they wouldn't give us a lease in 10 years, but just in case, like, it'd be terrible if something happened in 10 years to say, well, we're not going to lease this because we're going to use it for something else and we lose half an island. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> At least if we put a curb in the front with, like, the walkways and stuff, you can get the double parking. So if something like that does happen, at least we still have the same parking. We're not investing all that. That's just my feeling. If it, Are you talking about parking only on one side instead of both sides? Both sides, sides but, in fact, the railroad comes in in 10 years and say, hey, we're not going to, you know, or it becomes so much that they say, well, we'll lease it to you, but it'll be this much money now, or something where it's not feasible to where, you know, we can still use the parking and not have to reconfigure. And we're not losing, like, an island or something oh, like that. Oh, God, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Without the drive aisle coming to that side. <clears throat> yeah, without the whole island, just put a curb right around the front, because it's kind of like Mantino has, mm -hmm. with, like, a tree or two or something like that, I guess. And then you have one way going in, one way going out. They still have a two-way street. You can still get in it, but one way in, one way out, and parking all goes one way. So you say you pull in on the north side, mm -hmm. all the diagonals will be facing from, I guess it'd be southeast or southwest to northeast. How long is the lease? Yeah. It's five. Uh, is it? It's five years. It's five years. Yep. <clears throat> like five years. Something changes. Then that'll save some money too, I guess. Any other comments from the board? 
just for what it's worth, um, in the past when you leased land from the railroad, um, they usually wanted a firm five, but they would allow another two or three extensions. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, the same. Yeah, I don't anticipate them. I mean, over the history, we've been renting this lot for years and years. I mean, I understand we're making a, we'd make a significant investment in this, but it's really a landlocked parcel. The railroad doesn't own the land. You know, we own the building to the north and. The uh, land to the south is owned by somebody else, so I don't know. The thing I worry about is like like Bartell's building down there. Like they're there for how many years, and then they up their rent, and they wanted more for insurance and stuff like that. And now they're not there anymore. I'm yeah. just afraid you put like you know, say you put all this money into it, and then in five years somebody else is in charge and say, well, no, we're gonna want this much money. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking like, well, they're gonna pay it because they put all this money into it. I guess I'm just thinking if you keep it simple and keep costs down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Is that on the north part of the property that we're leasing? Um, east. It's the uh, yeah east next to the track. So we purchased the uh, western kind of half of that parking lot, but they wouldn't sell us the whole parking lot they wanted to keep like 20 feet of it okay. for leasing so probably would be like right where that median is we also not do trees and do like flower pots or something like that something that's easier to move at winter time because this would be a pain to plow in snow in winter time and everything like that especially if cars are parked there we do something like that then at least it's easier to clear the lot Would this lot end up being flat track as opposed to the way it is now from the railroad tracks that drains down towards railroad street it would it would mo we have, well, that's what we got to figure out but it would most likely stay the same where it would drain towards railroad street because that's where the storm sewers are would the water dissipate as opposed to creating the river down through there um well that's why we kind of talked about putting that bioswale in the middle of the median because it's kind of going to collect there and then we could have a drain to get it to the storm sewer but then a lot of it you know it depends how much we want to tear into the old storm sewers which are pretty small and then there's a water main run along there so you don't, it's going to be hard to tear, tear up and put new storm sewer with separation requirements <coughs> um, so yeah it's going to be challenging I think Mantino has like a curb along here, but then the road I think is flat and they have parking blocks around there so the water does flow off and then goes into the curb. Yeah. And then it goes through, I think I believe that's how it is. So that wouldn't really pull up the water there, it would just kind of roll. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? All right, well, we'll kind of refer this to our downtown committee and they can look at it and take your comments and um, Troy will give you some direction, I guess, okay? Okay. All right, uh, E, overview and discussion regarding economic interest statements, gift ban act, and ethics requirements. So uh, this came up, the legislature passed uh, some new laws as far as ethics, and also the economic interest statements that all of us have to fill out every year, and I just wanted everybody to get an update from Michael has agreed to, uh, to give us a little update on what's involved in all these things. So I'll let you take it from there, Michael. <coughs> all right, thank you, Mayor. So this would be all right? All right, thanks. So uh, because we had a lighter agenda tonight, uh, as the mayor said, he suggested we take advantage of that and I give a quick overview of a few ethics issues relevant to board members. Um, and in particular, uh, you know, quick overview on prohibited political activities, gift ban act, and these new requirements for economic interest disclosure statements. Um, so the, the, the basic principles, and, and there's also other aspects of uh, ethics which we're not going to touch on tonight, in particular conflicts of interest and the uh, compatibility of office 
issues. Um, maybe we can catch up on that at a different time. But that's something I go over with the new trustees in their training, so that's probably fresher in everyone's minds. Um, so the basic principles of local government ethics, uh, it, these core principles are listed here. Public office should not be used for political gain. Public office should not be used for financial gain or personal benefit. Uh, public officials' employees should not be influenced by gifts or gratuities, and um, transparency of potential conflicts and disclosure of, of conflicts. At the state level, law covers these topics in the State Officials and Employees Ethics Act, and each municipality under that law is required to incorporate those <coughs> into their village code. Uh, Piatone, uh, many years ago, has incorporated the act at Chapter 38 of the village code. Um, so the first section of all this, uh, and I gave you a handout with the PowerPoint on it, really concerns the uh, prohibited political activities. And I, I'm not going to get into a bunch of detail, but I, I gave you a lot of text so you can kind of read that at your leisure and, um, and, and kind of familiarize yourself with it. But the gist of the prohibited political activities sections is that uh, whether we're talking village employees or you as public officials, um, that you don't want to be conducting political activities uh, during comp compensated time in the case of employees or in your uh, case um, as part of your official duties. Okay, so there's a list of things uh, in here on uh, page, page 8 which starts this list of prohibited political activities. Um, the types of things that you can't do while doing <coughs> official duties, soliciting contributions, uh, organizing political meetings, um, soliciting votes, uh, doing petitions, etc. Um, going on further down the list on page 9 is one that often comes up in the local government context and that's referendums. Uh, so, as an example, if you had a referendum uh, that the village board was um, it had authorized to go on a ballot for a bond issuance, for instance. Uh, you know, you can, as an individual resident, voice, voice your support for a local referendum uh, when you're out and about, uh, talking to residents, et cetera, uh, but you can't do it as part of your official duties. So um, we, we can't sit here and, uh, as part of your meeting, urge everybody to vote for or against a particular referendum. Municipalities can, under the election laws, provide factual information. So often, uh, when there's a referendum, that, you know they'll make fact sheets available. How much uh, are your property taxes going to go up should this pass uh, for the average resident based on home value, etc. Uh, that sort of thing. Does this apply to other <coughs> taxing bodies' referendums? Yes. So. Um, it, it, you know, same thing. It's kind of a blanket prohibition. So even if it's another taxing body, you can't urge a yay or nay as part of their official duties here. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, you're free to do it um, when you're out and about uh, representing yourself just as an individual, but but not uh, as part of your official duties. And so um, one of the things. So if uh, it commonly, if 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 a municipality has put a referendum on the on the ballot. Um, what commonly happens is like an independent group will be organized that will do the hard work of, of getting signs out <coughs> and, and urging that to be passed that has nothing to do uh, officially with the village. Um, on page 10 you'll see this is kind of the core of this uh, that we can't perform any of the activities on this list during compensated time, use municipal property or resources for campaign purposes, uh, you know, you can't associate the village logo with, with campaign materials. Can't direct employees to engage in these types of politi prohibited political activities, etc. Okay, uh, there are a couple exceptions that are pretty obscure, um, but but I did include <coughs> them on slide 11. All right, uh, so more moving on to something that's probably more relevant to you on a, on a common basis is the Gift Ban Act portion of the state law. And here, again, we're concerned about gifts from what, what the act, uh, what the act terms <coughs> prohibited sources. And these are people seeking official action from the village, so somebody seeking uh, approval of a contract, zoning relief, uh, vendors doing business with the village, uh, people conducting activities regulated by the village, such as business owners, bar owners, 
Um, anyone who has interest that may be substantially affected by actions of the village and lobbyists. Okay, uh, gift under the law is broadly defined and includes gratuities, discounts, entertainment, hospitality, loans, forbearance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anything that having monetary value, uh, including cash, food, and drink, honoraria for speaking engagements, um, those sorts of things. And, and the basic rule is, uh, except as otherwise provided in the act, no officer uh, of which you are or employee shall intens intentionally solicit or accept any gift from any prohibited source uh, or in violation of any federal or state statute, rule, or regulation. And this uh, ban in importantly includes your spouses and your immediate family living with you, um, living with the officer or the employee. And it goes both ways. So prohibited sources are, are uh, not allowed to offer or make a gift that violates the act. So they can be uh, uh, guilty for, for making that offer to you. Um, there are, as you might imagine, a number of exceptions in the Act. Uh, there's 12 listed exceptions. Um, the first, the, I'm just going to touch on a couple, but opportunities, benefits, and services that are available on the same conditions as for the general public. So for instance, if there is a car dealership uh, it's giving out tickets to a baseball, baseball game, they're the first 100 people that uh, show up there on a particular day, uh, you are free to get that and accept it because any anybody uh, can get that. Even though you regulate that car dealership as a business, um, that's not a prohibited gift because that's available to all members of the public on the same terms and uh, conditions. Um, anything that you pay market value for, uh, gifts from relatives. So this is pretty, the definition of, of what relatives are able to give a uh, gift and not be a prohibited source so these are relatives who may be doing business with the village or have some relationship that makes them a possible prohibited source, but because they're your relatives, they're accepted. Um, and again, you can see the list on page 14 here. It's pretty broad, uh, but it does have its limits. So for instance, if your second cousin owns a business in town, uh, they're not covered by that relative exception. They can still be a prohibited source. Okay. Um, another exception is personal friendship. And here we kind of look at the history. Uh, let's say you and a friend have given gifts to each other since you were teenagers. Um, so even if you guys are, you know, now successful adults and giving yourself each other nice gifts, uh, the history of that relationship, and if they're not seeking anything uh, in particular from you, even if they have business with the village, uh, it may, may make them exempted from being a prohibited source. Food or refreshments not exceeding $75 in a calendar day, provided they're consumed on the premises. So uh, as an example, if I was at a bar with a couple of board members and, and bought a couple rounds uh, and, and those rounds didn't exceed $75 a person, um, that is not a prohibited gift despite uh, my, my relationship as a vendor. Um, you're able to give each other gifts and give staff members gifts. There's an exception for these uh, intergovernmental and intergovernmental gifts, intra and inter. Um, so, it, you know, if, if you feel moved to uh, uh, give Amy or Karen a gift uh, because you're doing such a great job or whatever, um, that you're allowed to and that's not a prohibited source or they can give you gifts. Um, and then lastly, items during the calendar year, so long as they have a cumulative value of less than $100. So it's $75 in a single day and $100 over the course of, of the year. So uh, it, if there was a board practice where some of us went to a bar each, each week after the meeting, um, I wouldn't be able to buy rounds every, every week because that ultimately would cause the, the um, $100 to be exceeded. Okay, so, uh, it, you know, a lot of this is just common sense, um, but we take it seriously because the Act has criminal penalties, so it's something that you always want to keep in mind um, uh, and just be cognizant of. And if you ever have questions, uh, it, you know, you can, through Amy, uh, have them channel to us, and, and we're happy to give you feedback on what a, how a particular situation may or may not be prohibited. Um, I included a few examples. Uh, the first one, uh, questions and examples. 
Uh, the first one, uh, you're friends with the village receptionist. Ask her to make campaign phone calls for you during lulls in her work day. Uh, so the question is, can she do that? And the answer is no. That's a prohibited political activity. She's on compensated time. You shouldn't ask her. She should not do it, or you'll both be in violation. Um, but she is free, for example, to make uh, calls for you as a volunteer and away from Village Hall, uh, but only if she's doing it voluntarily and doesn't feel compelled to do it for job purposes. Um, village trustee stops at a gas station in the village to pick up a few items from the convenience store. Uh, an employee in the t store tells the trustee he can have a free cup of coffee because he appreciates the board's work and service to the community. Uh, may the trustee accept the free cup of coffee. Um, so here we have that uh, $75 exception. Uh, you technically could accept that, um, but uh, there's also this, this optics issue. Um, and accepting gifts is, is like of that nature is typically not good. Um, because the issue becomes whether the store owner is providing the cup voluntarily or feels pressured into providing it. Um, if you end up in a dispute or code enforcement action with a particular business, they, they could spin that and say, you know, the trustee comes in all the time and shakes me down for free coffee, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it just is better off uh, not done. Um, another example, Homeowners Association, a large, large subdivision in the village, conducts an annual run for charity to raise money in memory of a police officer killed on duty. Uh, the police officer's family lives in the subdivision. They donate the procedure, proceeds annually to the police department to purchase optional safety equipment. Um, there's a break-in in the subdivision. President of the association emails the police department asking for increased patrols in their subdivision and mentions the donations from the charity run. So is the donation allowed and may the police department increase patrols as requested? Uh, donation is allowed as municipalities can accept gifts and donations that help to defray op operational expenses and equipment. So, uh, you, you know, people commonly make all kinds of donations to, to villages. Um, but uh, w once the homeowners association has kind of tied that to this request to to uh, do these extra patrols, it becomes more problematic. So uh, they're asking for some official action now and bringing up the fact that they've made these donations. Uh, so the proper thing in that case is is for the police department to respond and say, you know, we're not we're not going to accept we're not accepting these monetary gifts in order to to give you a quid pro quo in the form of these increased patrols. Um, we're not going to do it based on the donations, uh, but you can deliver services based on your standard operating procedures, objective data, and identified public needs and governmental purposes. So, you know, one break, up, break in is probably not sufficient to increase patrols, but if there's an ongoing pattern of criminal activity or something that merits these increased patrols, you could do it regardless of the donations because it's part of your standard operating procedures. And the last example, I think, uh, your best friend since high school is also the village's computer services vendor, offers you and your family four White Sox playoff tickets valued at well over $100 each. Can you accept them? And uh, the answer here depends on why they were offered. Uh, is he doing it because you're friends or because the vendor services contract is up for renewal next month? Um, if it is because you're friends and you have this long history, then yes, you're free to take them because it falls under that that. A, a, uh, example of uh, or that exception for for these personal relationships all right and the last thing is uh, the mayor mentioned um, these economic interest statements so you're all familiar you get those cards each year uh, those uh, forms that you fill out for the county um, that have six questions uh, that have certain questions on them about your um, your, your financial business and the idea behind these um, is that you know they're trying to make sure that there's transparency that you um, that, that you don't have uh, prohibited interests with uh, with certain firms or, or entities associated with the village um, and just want to have a handle and an official record that you've self-disclosed on those subjects um, so there was some legislation last year um, as, as part of like a broader uh, state uh, uh, ethics reform bill um, it's intended to strengthen reporting and transparency, me transparency measures concerning investments, assets, and business relationships that are relevant to elected officials. So there's these six questions uh, uh, that, are, that are slightly different than what you've done in the past. 
um, and, and you'll do those for 2022 where they're going to ask you about your assets uh, that are valued in excess of $10,000, uh, whether they're held individually, jointly with a spouse, or jointly with a minor child. Um, they're going to ask you about uh, your different sources of income of, of anything over 7500 annually from individual places for both you and your spouse. Um, ask you about creditors, uh, what, unit, what units of government you hold office in, uh, lobbyists which you, with, with which you have an economic relationship, and uh, sources of different gifts that you may have received. Um, so importantly, assets uh, include things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, etc., um, and investment real estate. They don't include uh, things like your personal residence, uh, your personal vehicles, saving or checking accounts, bonds, notes um, issued by federal or state local government, etc., college saving plans. Um, so I've given you a one-page uh, sheet that was created by the Illinois Municipal League that kind of outlines some of the new things uh, and, and parameters uh, regarding this economics uh, interest statement. So uh, because it's a little different than, than last year, we wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. And uh, you don't have to do it for a few months yet, but you can start thinking about uh, this and, and getting your papers in order. and. Um, it, you know, probably a lot of similar information that you've uh, disclosed in your tax returns, so th that will be helpful and the timing kind of coincides as well. So is, is this going to be like a, yes, I have values in excess of $10,000, or yes, I do, and I have to list every Yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to list them. Um, the Act has the form in it, and it's, it, you know, it's one of those check the box and then list them out. So uh, um, I haven't seen the official form yet and I don't know what it's going to look like, but um, it, 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 you know, they are going to want to know those details. Who's they? Uh, well, it's going to come from the county. Um, the, state, the state has a form that they've outlined for uh, for state employees, but the counties do it for all the local elected officials um, and certain employees. Uh, and the secretary, the act also says the secretary of state is going to put information and guidance on all this new stuff on their website. I checked today and did not see it, so it's probably not up yet. Um, uh, and the act's not even effective till January first, um, so. I, I presume they're working on it and they'll get it up and maybe we can even revisit it once there's more detail and we know what the county form is going to look like. But it's something that will come from one of the county officials that you need to fill out and turn back into them. Uh, yeah. Does that information become public information? Uh, yeah, they are, they are available to people. So basically you're throwing all your cards out for everybody in the world to take a look? Yeah, I mean you're not putting... Uh, it, you're not putting uh, account numbers and stuff, but uh, yes, it, it's um, unfortunately one of the... What if the, the stuff's in a trust? Uh, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Um, but but I would guess it may be if, if... What do you got? Assets and a trust. Based, there we go. Thank you, Pat. Assets and a trust based on the total value of the assets, either subject to the beneficial interest or from which income is to be derived for the benefit of the beneficial interest, regardless of whether distributions have been made. So yes, trusts are covered. They are viewed as uh, subject economic interest subject to disclosure. So, so it's just one of those uh, yeah. not less fun things about being a, an elected official. So when you, when you see the new form come out or the new guidance, we should give us a, an update. Um, when we get, you know, yeah, let's sure. revisit this maybe after the first yeah. of the year when they have more materials available. Okay. Is this met with much resistance from public officials? Um, yeah, so, so you know, the, these reporting requirements have been around for a long time, um, I, I, in, but they just kind of revamped it this year to make it a little more robust, I guess. Um, 
and and we don't get involved too much, uh, but occasionally, you know, officials will call us with particular questions about disclosing this or that, and we'll do our best to provide guidance. But uh, the county people may have a better idea of what the compliance rates are, et cetera. Any other questions from the board? All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, questions of the press? Hi. Hi. Um, can I get a copy of that parking plan? Sure. And then, Amy, would you also forward me that presentation? Sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, any other correspondence, <coughs> communications, petitions, anything else from the board? Uh, if not, we have to go into an executive session. It wasn't on our uh, agenda, but this will be a closed session for the purpose of discussing employment, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, and no action will be taken on this tonight. So I'll need a motion to go into executive session. Motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Bowden, second by Trustee Sluice. Okay, roll call vote. Trustee Bowden? Yes. Trustee Sluice? Yes. Trustee Jones? Yes. Trustee Hudson? Yes. And Trustee Sturgeon? Yes. All right. Okay, motion carried.